Hi, this is G from Native Speakers Academy, and this special post will hopefully answer the question, how do I raise a child while disciplining less? This is basically looking at how can I achieve peaceful parenting when we know that everyone is different. There are many different types of people all over the world living in different cultures. And to answer this, we have to simplify the situation a little bit. So let's look at what we have discovered in Western culture. Very often when a child loses control of their ability to communicate. This means that they're expressing themselves not through words, they are shouting, crying, they are being silent, they're not communicating, or they're expressing themselves in perhaps another way which makes communication difficult for you. We need to know about different approaches that we can make to the children. And so first and probably the most important thing we have to do is recognize that the child wants to communicate but can't. Perhaps they don't have the words Perhaps they don't have the confidence. There's something missing there. And remember, children are mirrors of their environment. They are copying, re-experiencing what they have seen in the world about them, what they have learned. And remember that children are essentially and should be models that are allowed to develop naturally but also slightly shaped by their parents and their parents involvement in their life. The parents should be the most involved and it has been often said that parent is first a verb before it's a noun. It's something that you need to do. It's something that you need to understand. It's not just some thing that you can automatically be. And the same goes for the words mother and father. In my opinion, they are first verbs before they are nouns. So, Let's have a look here. There's a hidden message in your child's behavior. That is what we have just discussed, that they want to communicate, but they don't have the ability to communicate. So you have to create that environment of communication. And how do you do that? Well, after first recognizing that the child needs something, you need to identify what kind of personality type your child has. Now, it, your child might not fit directly into one of these four types that you can see. As I said at the beginning, we're all individual. We're all unique. Well, we're all born with an independent personal perspective. And so it's very often difficult to categorize people, especially children, because they're still developing. But let's use this simplification, and maybe this simplification can help us. 
So type 1, we have here the fun loving child. The primary connection to the world is social. They like to be around people. The primary movement, bouncy and random. If you've noticed, a lot of children run everywhere they go. There's a great urgency about them. The primary need is to have fun and to be with parents and to make the parents have fun, to encourage the parents to join in those activities. They are often described as friendly, bright and light-hearted. They are often judged externally as flighty, hyperactive and unreliable. And these are not essentially negative characteristics. They are just skills that have a right place and a right time. Type 2, we have the sensitive child. The primary connection to the world is emotional, emotive, expressing feelings and perhaps a wide variety of changing feelings. The primary movement is subtle, quiet and thoughtful, reflective. The primary need is to have feelings hurt, to be connected to family, to have someone to talk to, to know that they need to know that there's somebody there for them, somebody listening. Doesn't have to be a parent, could be a grandparent, could be a friend of a family, could even be just a friend. They are often described as gentle, tender, mindful, but they're often judged externally as shy, wimpy and hypersensitive. And this is just a reaction to the actions in their environment. In group three, or type three, we have the determined child, a child who has a primary connection to the world that is physical, the need to touch, to hold, to feel things, the need for contact. The primary movement is active and determined. Nothing is going to stop them. And they will try and try again. The primary need is to have new experiences, to have adventure, and to know that they're supported in these adventures and that they can share these experiences. They are described as busy, persistent and energetic, but they're judged as pushy, demanding, loud, wanting too much all of the time, often unappreciated. <laughs> Remember the, um, <laughs> the really old uh, saying, children should be seen and not heard? How ridiculous was that? How completely in antithesis of how children need to be. Type 4 is the more serious child. A child with a primary connection to the world that is intellectual, thoughtful, thought-provoking even. With the primary movement is straightforward and exact, precise, calculated measured. The primary need is to receive respect often from authority and to have this respect reciprocated, to for it to be mutual. They are often described as efficient, analytical, thorough,
I can imagine children like these developing very similar characteristics to their their parents. They've observed what their parents do, they've observed their parents as organized, precise, exact, dedicated people, and so they copy those patterns. They're often judged as critical and know-it-all because knowledge is a crime in many circles. So we have defined four basic types and it might be that the child doesn't fall exactly into one of those types. It might be that a child evolves and develops through one into another. But once we begin to understand the child's nature, what we can do is we can try to interpret how the problem has manifested itself. What is the child trying to say? How do we interpret this reaction in a peaceful way? Remember that the child is telling you something even if they don't know how to say it. So, we have the fun-loving child first. As a parent, you can perhaps ask yourself some questions to help yourself find the right path. The first question would be, does my child feel overly controlled? Do I need to open up the space a little bit more? Has my child had too much time alone? Do they need contact with other children? Or is something in my child's life too serious? Do we need to lessen somehow the seriousness of the problem? Do we need to break a bigger problem down into smaller parts so that it's more easier to manage. Our type 2 child, the sensitive child, the emotional child. Questions that you might want to ask yourself. Does my child feel unheard or dismissed? Have they lost contact? Have they been cut off or even cut themselves off for some reason? Have my child's plans been ignored? As they might have trouble voicing themselves, perhaps we need to encourage the voices within them. Is something in my child's life too intense? Is there something that they need to discuss further? Is there something they need to discuss more? Is there something on their mind? Is there something bouncing around their head that they need to know they need to know other people care and they need to know other people understand. So that's another way to keep the door open. Our type three child the determined child, the child who, through persistence, will again and again and again work to achieve what they want. Does my child lack enough physical outlets? Are they doing enough activities, enough exercises, enough sports? Is there diet sufficient? Are they getting enough food and water? Are they getting the right kinds of food? Fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, not too many sugary foods, not too many foods with additives and flavorings and colors that you you don't, you know, just look at the label. If you don't know what it is, 
Don't buy it. Has my child been told no too often lately? Have they just accepted rejection? Perhaps they just need to hear yes, a little bit of encouragement. Perhaps they need to be told it's okay. Is something in my child's life too stifling? Are they limited in some way, either by time with activities or in their environment? Is there something you can put in there? Is there something you can add? Perhaps you can ask them what it is that they would like, what it is that they need. The last of the four types is the more serious child, who is intellectual, respectful, polite, and yet often finds it difficult to fit in. Does my child need to feel more respected? Does the child need more intellectual stimulus, more books, a trip to the library, a conversation with the family, a game perhaps? Does my child need some time to reflect and focus? Are they doing too much? Perhaps some things need to be slowed down. We often think of the world as of a child as being pretty free, but if we consider time spent related to school, time spent related to hobbies and interests, time spent related to family responsibilities, it might be that the child doesn't actually have a lot of time for their own reflection on their own ideas and to focus and make their own plans. And finally, is something in my child's life embarrassing? Are they frightened to talk about something? Are they worried about something? Have they projected a relationship or an idea into the future? And have they understood the possible problems, the implications of present actions? Do they have a fear? It's interesting that most of the time we fear the, the unreal, the impossible and the invisible which is essentially irrational. And we need to understand that and use that to help us take steps forward. And we can use all of these questions that we can ask ourselves in order to find an answer with which we can help our children to express themselves, to communicate, and most importantly to know that they're loved and understood. And all of these things need time. They don't happen instantly. Sometimes they don't happen in a day. Sometimes we need a week. Sometimes we need a month. I know that in my own life, if I want to implement some changes, sometimes it takes years. It's hard to deal with, but that's true. Journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. If you want to run the marathon, <laughs> you got to start on with the small scales first. Fourthly, essentially we need to be intuitive and not reactive not instant in our responses, but understanding in our responses. To know when there is a problem, to know when there might be a problem, and to understand when there was a problem as well. To see how the past affects the present, to see how the present affects the future. To see the relationship between all of those things. So, how do we develop this, this intuition? For the first type, let's remind ourselves, this is the fun-loving child, the child who likes to have fun, who 
who is friendly, bright, light-hearted. What we need to do very often is bring a surprise into the child's world. Something that we know that they will like and they know that they will enjoy. Something that's perhaps spontaneous. Yet it can also be prepared. It's about you, the parent, as much as the child. We need also to facilitate friendship, keep open doors, and to have fun with them, not just to watch them, not to be on the outside, but to be on the inside of the relationship. They need to know that we care. Type 2. Let's remind ourselves, this is the sensitive child. The child who needs to be heard, the child who needs to be connected to their family, often thought of as gentle and mindful. What do we do with this kind of child? We reassure the child. We tell the child that it's okay. We let the child know that we are there for them. We give the child time to relax. We don't put them under pressure. And again, we connect with them. We spend time with them. We don't just organize things for them, but we are there for those things as well. It's not just that we take them to the football training, it's that we go out into the park with the football and we kick the football around, or we get out the pens and the papers or the paints and we, we draw together, we color together, we walk together, we talk together. Type 3, well, this is the determined child. This is the child who is active, the child who seeks new experiences, busy, persistent, energetic, and loud. So what do we do? How do we react? Of course, we encourage the child to explore these ideas. These ideas are part of the child's psychology. They're part of the child's mentality and physicality. So we encourage them to run, to jump, to climb, to move, to play, to compete for all the individual benefits that exist in competition. We let them move fast. We let them be faster than us. And we allow adventure. We allow them to explore the world. Because that's what learning is. Learning is exploration of the world around about us. And type four, this is the more serious child. The intellectual straightforward, the precise, the efficient, the organized, the one that often asks those difficult questions that actually require knowledge for an answer. And how do we do this? Well, we, we understand that we need to respect authority. We need to respect those who are above us, who are beyond us, who know more than us, who can teach us, who can coach us, who can guide us, who can mentor us, who can help us. We need to understand that positive relationship. We also need to organize a support structure for them so that they have something to fall back on if they are unsuccessful with their own ideas in their own way. And we can build that with them. And we need to work on a focus of listening, our reciprocal approach, the basis of conversation, understanding, and philosophy. Finally, we need to enjoy 
the joy. We need to love the children and we need to love what we're doing with the children. We need to let them experience love, comfort, understanding, empathy if we want them to develop those skills. And we need to be guides. We need to be lights that shine through the darkness that is ahead and show the way we need to lead by example by being the best that we can be and if we can do that hopefully we can provide a better future for the children the information in this presentation was brought to you by Native Speakers Academy and the graphic comes from thechildwhisperer.com Thank you very much for paying attention to this short presentation. If you'd like to know more about what we do, then you can visit us at www.nsa-slovakia.com Remember, there are many ways to raise a child. Each child is individual. But if we work at it, I'm sure we can find many peaceful ways. And so, children will have an opportunity to grow up in a better, brighter, safer world. Thank you very much. I hope to speak to you soon. Take care.